Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is establishing causation. This is part of our ongoing discussion of comparative statics, which is the subject of Lesson 3.4 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Check the video description for more information about that. When we use game theoretical models to study social phenomenon, we're often interested in establishing causal patterns regarding those phenomenon. And game theory is a really useful tool to establish those causal patterns. Think about what you're doing when you put together a game theoretical model. You have a bunch of inputs that you need before you can do any sort of game theory at all. You need to think about the number of players in an interaction. Who are they? How many of them are there? You need to think about the information that those players have. Is the game simultaneous or do they take turns so someone moving later knows what someone else has done before? This could also be a case of complete information versus incomplete information. Incomplete information is something that we're going to get to in a few units, but you can imagine situations where one player doesn't know what another player's payoff is. And so we can think about situations where that's the case and where that's also not the case. When we have the players playing a game, of course, they need some strategies or some actions to choose. And then lastly, there are payoffs. So we have a bunch of different outcomes that can occur based off of the strategies that the players take. And each one of those outcomes has a payoff. What do those payoffs look like? What are those players' preferences over those outcomes? Once we have all of these inputs written down, that's when we can start finding equilibria, essentially doing our game theoretical stuff, what we've learned in the past, say, couple dozen lectures and what we'll be learning more about forthcoming in the future lectures. But when we do that, we're just using math to spit out outputs. We take inputs, we put them through this function known as game theory, and the game theory spits out outputs for us, like the strategies that the players will play in equilibrium, the outcomes that are associated with those strategies, and also the payoffs the players receive after playing those strategies. So we can figure out not only how well off one individual is, but also think about maybe welfare. How, off, how well off is the collection of individuals that are playing the game following the end of that game after they play the strategies that are prescribed to them? Game theory is awesome because it allows us to logically map the inputs to the outputs. This is essentially equations of causation that we are creating with game theory. Game theory takes the inputs as what the world looks like, and then it allows us to use the mathematical magic to spit out outputs and tell us what happens as a consequence of the inputs. And this is useful for establishing causal relationships when we vary the inputs that we put into this function known as game theory. For example, imagine that we're interested in studying warfare. We have some number of players, we have some information, we have some actions, and we have some payoffs. And in the particular case that we're going to look at first, there are high costs to war. So if the players reach any outcome where war occurs, they will pay high costs for engaging in that combat. We take those as inputs, we use game theory to find the equilibrium of that game, we get the outputs of that game. And we have some strategies there, we have some realized payoffs, and we also have some qualitative outcome. What is the outcome of the game, given that the strategies that the players are playing in equilibrium? And maybe the outcome of that game is peace. So here we have high costs leading to peace. But maybe we have peace all the time in this model. Maybe the costs don't actually matter. Well, game theory can allow us to establish that costs matter by looking at a different situation. Let's hold everything else constant, the players, the information and the actions available to them. And let's just add one thing. Let's add low costs. So instead of having high costs, we change the model to have low costs instead. We're varying the parameters that we put in there as inputs. We still use the same logical mapping known as game theory to take those inputs and give us outputs. And maybe the output switches from peace to war. Well, now we have a clear causal argument. When we have high costs, we have peace. When we have low costs, we have war. So holding everything else constant, we can observe using these equations of causation known as game theory, we can now say conclusively that high costs cause peace and low costs cause war. And this is what comparative statics is going to be doing for us. We're going to learn how to take 
a payoff input, in this case, which is high cost versus low cost, and see how the outputs of a game change as a function of those parameters. So join me next time when we get to that. Take care.